G'day everyone. Can I start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and their elders past, present and emerging. Former Prime Ministers Paul Keating and Kevin Rudd. Friends, Scott Morrison says this election isn't about him. That it's about you. And he's right. It is about you and how he's failed you. Not just flying off to Hawaii when our country was on fire or thinking he could fix it with a forced handshake. Not just failing to buy enough vaccines when half the country was locked down. Not just leaving Aussies on their roof to escape the floods, forced to hire their own helicopters. It's more than that. It's refusing to take responsibility for anything. And it just keeps happening. It happened again this week when the worst inflation results in 20 years came out. Inflation's through the roof, real wages through the floor, and now interest rate rises are knocking on the door. Life is getting harder, not easier. And what did Scott Morrison say this week? It's not my fault. It's not my job. How many times have you heard that? You deserve better than that. This is the best country in the world. But you deserve a better government. You deserve better than a government that blows five and a half billion dollars on submarines that don't exist. You deserve better than a government that drops 50 billion dollars on an NBN made out of enough copper to wrap around the planet one and a half times. A government that's responsible for the worst decade of wage growth in history and did it to you deliberately. A government that thinks all you need to do to win the trust of Pacific nations is play the ukulele. <laughs> and thinks climate change is what happens when you check out the April sun in Cuba. <laughs> and a prime minister who thinks there's no problem with corruption in his government while sitting there in his cabinet are more smoking guns than a Clint Eastwood movie. <laughs> a Prime Minister who thinks his job is to dress up pretending to do other people's jobs. This bloke is all tinsel, no tree. <laughs> Nothing about this bloke is real except his ability to let you down. This government has now been in power for almost a decade and they're asking for another decade but they're not going to change and they're not going to get any better and they're not going to fix the big challenges that we face. If you want to fix the crisis in aged care, then we've got to change the government. If you want cheaper childcare, we've got to change the government. If you want to make it easier to see the doctor, if you want to make it easier to buy a home, if you want us to make more things here in Australia, we've got to change the government. And if you want more secure jobs and better pay, if you want real action on climate change, if you want to cut your electricity bills, we've got to change the government. And if you finally want to recognise Indigenous Australians in our constitution and create an Indigenous voice to parliament, we've got to change the government. And if you want to make sure that corrupt politicians don't get away scot-free, <laughs> then we've got to change the government. <laughs> That's why we need a Labor government. We are the party that has shaped this country for the better. We're the party of Medicare, of superannuation, the NDIS, we're the party of the big economic reforms that have made Australia what it is today. We're the party that turns the Australia of your imagination into something real. And Australia, Labor is led by a man who is all of that. An honest man. Someone who doesn't treat politics like it's a game. 
Someone who didn't make up his own nickname. <laughs> Someone who will take responsibility, not shirk it. Someone who will work to bring us together, not try and pull us apart. Someone who understands that the most fertile place to plant our dreams and build a better future is the common ground between us. In Anthony, I see the unbending conviction of someone who knows that governments at their best really can change the lives of Australians for the better. He knows it because he's lived it. When he speaks about his childhood, it's not a plea for sympathy. It's the story of a mother's love. And it's the story of how hard work and good governments really can change the lives of people for the better. And it's also what's forged in him this philosophy that will guide us if we win your trust and win your vote. No one held back and no one left behind. And that's what makes him the Prime Minister Australia desperately needs right now. Anthony Albanese. Albo. Albo.